Hey! Hello. Hello, wonderful people. Hello, you wonderful people. So, so just like fetus pojo. So, but this is in, now the last thing anything is bread. Now the last thing anyone wants is bread. Now while you're going to get your bread flour, it is absolutely mandatory to listen to your favorite jams or else the bread is not gonna taste groovy. <laughs> That's a great idea! Yes! Ah, crazy! Rock a bear cat on his face! Facebook has stories too! Uh. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm Michael Kane. Michael Kane. Michael Kane. Michael Kane. I'm Michael Kane. Hello, my name's Michael Kane. Do you know where, my, where Batman's parents are? That's terrible. Oh boy! My name's Mickey Mouse. Where's Minnie? Where are the pot pies? They're in the freezer still. Hello there, I am the voiceover guy. Pojo does not have audio because it was too loud in the house to record using his mic. So I will be guiding you on your journey to fluffy bread heaven. The steps will be coming in hot, so be sure to take notes. So, if Pojo is done completely embarrassing himself, we can get going. Thank you. Now the first step. seriously, stop. Man, you're a child. You done? Alrighty then. Let's get to it. First, prepare your workstation. If every square inch of flat surface in your home is preoccupied at the moment, use a child or roommate. They will do nicely. Second, select your dough vessel. The recipe states not to use plastic or metal while mixing the dough, so glass or ceramic will have to do for now. Whatever you choose, make sure it's a big one. The dough will need plenty of room to expand. Now, the ingredients. Start off with six cups of bread flour, measured using the spoon and level method. You see, cups are measured in mass, not volume. So if you just scoop it, the flour will pack inside the measuring cup, resulting in too much flour. To the perfectly measured flour, add 3 fourth cups plus a teaspoon of sugar. Trust me, the teaspoon adds. The final dry ingredient that we will be adding to your dough vessel of choice is salt. Two teaspoons of it to be precise. Also, make sure you measure it out in a little bowl, because it's cute and well, rather artsy. Now, with a wooden spoon, because of the no metal rule, combine all the ingredients and make sure to have a consistent dry mix, like shuffling an NPR playlist. Finally, the star of the first episode takes the stage. Stir the starter up, again with a wooden spoon, so that all those good particulates are dancing about as you measure out one cup and set it aside. This next step is a bit complicated, but I know you can handle it. Measure one and a half cups of cold water and warm it up in the microwave. I've been told the cold water is cleaner than the hot water that's been sitting in the water heater, so use that. You don't have to add the vegetable oil to the water. You could measure your half cup on the side, but it looks so pretty, doesn't it? Okay, that's enough. Gradually add those wet ingredients to your dough vessel of choice. Make sure that the dry ingredients intermingle with the wet ones. Come on now, man. All of it. boy. Don't let the dry guys hang along the edges. Scrape down the sides to get them to join the party. I know they usually hang out in different social circles, but I think if they get to know each other, together they could make something wonderful. Just saying, the chemistry is definitely there. Now, your hands should be pretty darn sticky. And that's a wonderful thing. Just look at those gnarly looking fingers. Next, separate a reasonably sized section of plastic wrap and get it all slippery-like, which kind of defeats the purpose of it now that I think of it. You could use various slippery things like non-stick spray. I'm using butter because I don't have any non-stick spray. Ah, uh, look how disturbingly cloudy that is. Peel it off your work surface and loosely drape it onto your dough vessel of choice. Make sure it doesn't firmly grasp it. Loosely drape it. Loosely drape it. Loosely drape it! <sighs> you need to loosely drape it so that when the dough rises, the plastic wrap doesn't hinder its growth. Well, I guess you did it. To be frank, you definitely surpassed my expectations, Pojo. I didn't think you could tell the difference between your butt and a barn door. That's right. And you're just now realizing you have to do that all again. Two batches. It is a race, remember? Get to it, young man. 
So I just finished the second batch of bread using the original yeast starter. We're going to put both of these batches into the oven, which is off, to rise. It's going to take about eight hours and they're going to double in size. So until then, hang tight. Ah, uh, your beautiful dough that rose safely in the oven. Oh, that's not what it's supposed to look like. Far too, uh, blah. It seems as though when dinner was made, the stovetop heated up the oven below to a point where the dough kind of released. Well, no time to panic. Let's save this sucker. Flour your trusty work surface and make sure it's all spread around to minimize stickage. Pull, <clears throat> pour out your dough and cry into its disappointing goopy mass for a moment. Just long enough for a lot of flour to be added and for the Stanley mixer to knead it for 10 minutes. Separate your now beautiful dough into three even segments. Round the dough by pulling the edges underneath, so they look pretty on camera. The dough should be this elastic. Now comes the time to prepare their cooking vessels. If you don't have nonstick spray like me, oil the pans and sprinkle flour all over the floor for good measure. Now lay the dough into its metal compartment to rise another eight hours. If you don't have nonstick spray or loaf pans and feel like Elsa for some reason, separate one of your thirds into thirds. Roll and lay your three pretty dough snakes in a row Pinch the ends and begin your icy transformation. You could say, the dough never bothered me anyway. If you want to get festive, shape it into a wreath. Put that wreath on a baking sheet and let it rise for eight hours. Eight hours later. Good morning, Pojo. Sleep well? You have a lot of baking to do and sleep won't get it done. So get to work, you utter buffoon. Ah, your pretty loaves are pretty, aren't they? Let's make them a little prettier, eh? Using a basting brush or what have you, Paint the dough with some milk. Once you have a nice moist layer applied, sprinkle sugar all over that mamma jamma. And when I say all over that mamma jamma, I mean all over that mamma jamma. Stupendous! Now, ignoring the oven light burning out and the tripod in the reflection, bake the loaves for 30 minutes at a temperature of 325 degrees Fahrenheit or until golden brown. While those loaves are baking, Let's watch some more sugar sprinkles. That is the stuff right there. Congratulations, my friends! You have successfully made bread and haven't burned the house down, surprisingly enough. Time for the money shot. Eat your heart out, binging with Babish. That's how a real man does a cross-section. As the voiceover guy, you never get to know someone really well, but I think I love you. But I must take my leave. Back to you, Pojo. Quick Pojo Pro tip, if you want your bread to last longer and stay fresh longer, cut from the middle. Keep the butts together. It keeps the flesh from being exposed to the air and keeps it from getting stale faster because the crust is protecting it. So the next batch, I'm not going to make that silly error and we're going to see really which one does better. Based on what we've seen so far, I'm probably thinking that it's going to be a tie again. There was actually a difference between the two yeasts that I failed to mention before, and that was the physical look of them. The original yeast looked like little pellets, where the highly active yeast looked like tiny little needles. Now, I don't know exactly why the yeast looked different physically, but what I can say is that the highly active yeast definitely reacted far more vigorously at the beginning than the original yeast did. But once you draw that timeline out to about six full days, the two starters were almost indistinguishable. So like I said, I'm going to make another batch in about three days, at this point though, I believe that they're probably just gonna act the exact same. So as of today, both yeast starters tied. Mainly because I decided to shoot them in the chest before they even started running. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching Pojo's Procrastination Nation Bread Part 2. I used to have a lot of homework to get to, so I'm gonna go, <laughs> we both know that's not gonna happen. I'm actually going to enjoy a couple more of those loaves of lovely glutinous diabetes. And as always, thank you for watching. You're freaking fantastic, and I'll see you next time.